Recently, I got my Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 100 running again after replacing all of the capacitors in it. I teased at the end of that video that I'd also installed a Rex CPM module in it and would be taking a look at that later. What I didn't expect was how disjointed most of the documentation is for the Rex CPM. So today, I'm releasing my own set of instructions for how to set it up that you can find linked below. But we'll also be going through the entire process here. I don't normally make tutorial type videos, but this add-on hasn't had a ton of coverage and I think it would be beneficial to get it all laid out here. Before we begin, it would help to understand a few things. There are different Rex series add-ons available for the Model 100, with the CPM version being unique. It stores all of its main data in SRAM, which means it loses all contents when power is lost. This requires completely resetting up the device when you get it, and after storing the Model 100 with the batteries removed, which you should do. The entire Rex line offers two main features, the ability to load option ROMs and to save and restore the contents of main system RAM to save programs and files. The CPM version of the Rex adds more memory for both working RAM and storage to make running CPM on the native CPU possible. Getting the Rex CPM working is a multi-step process that involves a lot of different kinds of programs and it really helps to understand more about the system first before attempting to get it running. But if you've got a Rex CPM and are following along with this video though, there's no harm in plugging it in at any time. Just be careful with the pins on the upper PCB to make sure that you get it in the correct orientation the first time. I got it backwards and had to reattach one of the pins that broke off when I removed it. The first thing I want to cover before we start is the Tandy Portable Disk Drive. This was a product offered by Radio Shack that was compatible with multiple devices they had available. Compatible is a rather loose term though. It's a serial device based on a product originally made by Brother that requires the computer it's connected to to know how to use it. The Tandy WP2 I looked at a few years ago had native Tandy portable disk drive support. The Model 100 though does not. When you got the device originally, you needed to load a utility disk and send it a specific command to have it transfer a client program over to the Model 100 in order to be able to use it. I feel it is important to stress this fact because we will be doing some similarly clunky bootstrapping here, but this is just how this product was used with this computer. We will have a better long-term solution after getting it all set up though. With that, let's start getting ready to set up the Rec CPM now. There are a number of files you will need to collect to be able to do this. The page on my wiki links to where you can get these files and what exactly you'll need. I'll mention here that there are two versions of the Rec CPM and the CPM software. You can get the Rec CPM with either 2 megabytes or 4 megabytes of RAM, and there are different CPM images for each. You'll need to pay attention to which one you load later. After the files, you'll need two different types of programs for your host computer, a Tandy portable disk drive server and possibly a serial client. I'm doing this on Linux and will be using DL2 and Qtcom for these. I'll have a link below for some recommended Windows software, but I have not tested it. Lastly, you'll need a serial interface to connect your host computer to the Model 100. I'm using a USB to serial adapter that is already null modem, but if you have one that has mail pins, you'll likely need a null modem cable or adapter. Most of these that are available now are also 9 pin, but you can just use a 9 to 25 pin adapter to connect it to the Model 100. Before starting, I recommend putting the rxcini.do, rxe underscore 12.br, cpmupd.co, cpm.co, cpm410.bk, or 210, and tsd100.bx files all in one folder. The Tandy Portable Disk Drive server you are using needs to either be in this folder or pointed to it when we use it later. With all of that in place, we are now ready to begin setting up the Rec CPM. The first step is bootstrapping the Model 100 to have the ability to load the Rec CPM firmware. Go into the text program and give it the file name rxcini.do. I would recommend pressing label here so you can know what the function keys do. We need to press F2 to start a load. We're going to open the serial port here with com colon 88N1D on the computer to save anything sent to the Model 100 into the file we just made. The original manual describes what this com port shorthand means, but if you use 88N1D like I am here, it will be 9600 baud, 8 data bits, none parity, 1 stop bit, and no flow control, which is the most common configuration nowadays. Press enter after that to open the COM port and the system will seem to freeze. The cursor will stop blinking and that is the only indication that it is waiting. 
From your host computer you now need to connect to the serial port using the same configuration. Then you need to select the rxeini.do file to send. After sending the file, press shift and break to end the serial connection on the Model 100 and you should see the contents of the file you just sent. If that worked, you are now done with the serial client software and will be using the Tandy Portable Disk Drive server only from here. We're now ready to send the firmware to the Model 100 to initialize the REC CPM. Start the Tandy Portable Disk Drive server in the folder where you have all of the files ready. From the main menu on the Model 100, open BASIC and enter run quotes rxeini.do. It will ask two questions you should answer yes to for your first setup. After that, it will ask for the firmware file and load it from the Tandy Portable Disk Drive server. Enter rxc underscore 12, or if it's changed, whatever the current file is that ends in br, but without the extension. The bootstrap program will copy it to the Model 100 and flash it to the REC CPM. After that, the REC CPM is ready to be used as a standard REX add-on. In order to activate it though, from basic, you need to run the command call 63012. This will add the RxC MGR program to the main menu. It is possible to clear this state, so if the program is missing, remember the call command to bring it back. With the REX portion ready, we can now load in a proper Tandy Portable Disk Drive client on the Model 100. The bootstrap script is a brute force client and the text load method won't allow us to copy binary applications, so we need a full client to continue. Run the REX manager program from the main menu or press the new shortcut control A to configure the REX. From here we will need to switch from the RAN mode to the ROM mode by pressing tab. We can now press F2 to load an option ROM from the Tandy Portable Disk Drive server. We're going to load TSD100, which is the Tandy Portable Disk Drive client. After the file is loaded in, press enter on it and accept to set it as the active ROM. From the main menu, you will now have TSD100 as a program. We're now finally ready to copy over and install CPM. Open the TSD100 program from the main menu. Press F4 to switch from the system files to the disk files. We will need to copy the CPM UPD and CPM.co files to the system. Press 1 and enter over each of them, leaving the file name blank to use the original name. After they're copied, you should be able to see them in the system files area now. Press F8 to get back to the main menu, and we now need to do a preparation step. Enter basic again and run the command clear 0, 60,000 to wipe the area that CPM needs. Now you can go back to the main menu and run the CPM UPD program. And it's time for the final Tandy Portable Disk Drive transfer. Enter either CPM410.bk or the 210 version depending on which REC CPM you have. This will take some time to transfer, but once it's finished, you are completely done and CPM is installed. To access CPM, press Ctrl C from the main menu. You will be dropped at the main prompt. You can use dir to see the files currently available, stat will calculate the free space remaining, and pip is the file copy program, which, if you run without a parameter, is also a good time to learn that shift press break will also send Ctrl C to cancel a program. There are two non-standard CPM applications that are of particular note though, import and export. The CPM environment is completely separate from the normal Model 100 file area. It also does not have the same 6.2 file name restriction and is 8.3 instead. This makes transferring files a little tricky. The import and export programs act as Tandy Portable Disk Drive clients for loading and saving applications while also renaming them. Some Tandy Portable Disk Drive servers may support longer names, DL2 seems to truncate them. But I would recommend renaming any files you want to send to CPM as 6.2, then using the import command to restore their 8.3 name back. To copy files into it, you just need to run the import command, followed by the Tandy Portable Disk Drive server file name, and the original CPM file name. But this is a good time to cover some of the limitations of CPM and the Model 100 though. The Model 100 display is about one quarter of what CPM was designed to use, being 40 by 8 characters instead of 80 by 25. The Model 100 version of CPM does its best to try and work around this by pausing on line wraps, waiting for you to press enter to continue, but it can't be perfect. As an example, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game prints a status line at the bottom that always clears the screen and can make short messages almost impossible to catch. This isn't just a Model 100 problem though. CPM is designed around using terminals and some of the more advanced programs will need specific terminal entries to work correctly, as I talked about in my video on the K-Pro 4. 
I wouldn't even attempt loading WordStar on this because it just won't work. These two problems are going to limit your software options for this machine, but there is a list of programs tested to work well on it that you can check out. And it's worth trying others that are CPM compatible in case you find some more that do work. Just don't expect this to be the best CPM experience. It's still super cool though to see a full-fledged desktop operating system running on this machine. It's not too far out of the realm of possibility back when it was relevant either. To get more memory, there were actually bubble memory expansions that could have been enough to run CPM if it was available at the time. The Rec CPM module just ties all of these possibilities together. It's a really cool device and definitely a worthwhile upgrade to the TRS-80 Model 100. Well, I hope this video may have helped anyone trying to set up a Rec CPM or was just interested in some more TRS-80 Model 100 stuff. This was a little different of a video for me to make, so I hope it was at least enjoyable, but that is going to be it for now. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon, but for now, that's it, and I will see you next time.